Good morning everyone, it's Natasha. Um, this is actually my second time doing this video today. For some reason, the first one was corrupted or something. So this is my second try doing this video today. Hi, I'm Natasha. Um, if you don't know me, I do video content on MS. Um, you may have seen videos of um, the Kasimta injection actually giving myself the injection. Um, you may have seen previous videos on reselling, being a reseller um, on platforms like Poshmark, eBay, Macari, Facebook Marketplace, and I am going to this video is going to be just a recap on um, kind of my life uh, journey of MS and how it's affected my life, my children's life, my husband's life, and then leading up to um, something exciting that um, I'm getting ready to start that I would like to um, ask if you guys would like to do with me. I'm super excited about it. Something that I am really passionate about at this point. Something I've really wanted to do for several years. I've watched a lot of um, YouTube videos about it. Um, and so that will be at the end of this video. Um, it needs to be at the end of this video because what I'm going to talk about um, will lead to um, what I'm going to say at the end of this video. So, again, my name is Natasha. Um, I am 40 years old. I was diagnosed with MS on November 1st of 07, so um, 14 and a half years I've been diagnosed with MS. Um, my husband and I met in Colorado. We currently live in Arizona. We met in Arizona, uh, excuse me, Colorado um, many years ago. We are high school sweethearts. Um, we met in high school. Um, we've been together ever since, um, happily married. Um, he is absolutely my best friend in every, every way imaginable. Um, we have two children, both boys. Uh, call, Cody goes to college in Colorado. He is in his junior year currently. Taylor, uh, Cody will be 21 in May. Um, we have a Vegas trip planned with him and his girlfriends um, in May. Uh, Taylor is our second child. He is going to be 19 in January. Uh, he graduated from high school um, actually through he had to do his high school and his high uh, junior and senior year through the internet which um, was a good and bad thing um, it's neither here nor, ne nor there it is fine and it's done um, he is figuring out what he wants to do he may not want to go to college he may just want to do trade school um, Let's go back a little bit. Uh, we built our our home in Colorado um, when Taylor was, um, I think he was five. We were, we had it built. That was um, a little bit before I even knew that I had MS. I was working at the uh, dentist office. I worked there for uh, four and a half years. And for the last year I was there, I was being um, tested to figure out what was going on. Um, some of the symptoms I was having was um, really bad cold and hot sensitivity, balance problems. My mom was um, diagnosed with lupus. And usually, I don't know if you know, but usually passes. <clears throat> From mother to daughter so the first thing that we had done was blood work and my a and a levels came back low and so they just automatically assumed that I had lupus but some other tests or symptoms that I was having it was a while ago guys so I don't remember all of it made them do further testing and so um, I'm 
gonna probably just pass by some things because it's irrelevant to what I'm gonna get to here at the end of the video and I don't want it to be too extremely long um, but I ended up having um, a nerve study done where they prick different nerves in your body which is pretty painful when you already I mean it's painful anyways but when you have a nerve problem it's super super painful the thumbs the the toes um, he also had me, which this is the first time that anybody had me do this test, which was something that probably would be very simple to most uh, average people, was to walk in a straight line. And that was impossible for me to do at that point, and it was a good thing that he was standing behind because I would have fallen backwards. It was to walk in a straight line um, with your eyes closed. And I couldn't do that. Um, I just broke down in the the room. I I knew something was wrong. That that should be something that um, everyone should be capable of doing, and I was not. Um, I was not mentally prepared for that. I kn I knew this whole time that there was something wrong um, with all the things that I was going through. I the boys at that time were already playing. Um, Hold on one second. So after that visit, um, he knew right away that there was something neurologically going on. So after that visit, I think maybe it was three days later, I had uh, not only a my first um, MRI, but I also had a, a lumbar puncture done. Um, the MRI was fine. I mean, doing it was fine, but. Uh, the spinal ta the lumbar puncture I did not have much uh, spinal fluid that they could catch in order to test it so they had to do several different things move moving me around um, I don't know I don't remember all the different things but um, from this from having the spinal fluid and things done that day. I remember having the most excruciating um, migraine headache. I mean, I have a history of having migraine headaches, so I mean, they weren't new to me, but this was a different type of headache. So I remember my mom, my mom had to drive me to that, driving me from there to having my first, um, some, so some sort of infusion. I don't remember what it was. I don't believe that it was for MS. I believe it was something else just to try to help with the pain from the actual migraine. Because I, w I mean, I was throwing up. I mean, I was severe. I mean, I was miserable. So I had those things. And then I had my, um, my <coughs> dogs. So I see my, <sighs> I see my neurologist to review my first. So I seen my neurologist, a neurologist, to review my first set of films. And he's seen the lesions. Um, I don't remember where the first ones were. But you have to have, um, they have to have two sets of films to be able to diagnose you with MS. That set of films and then wait, I believe, two months and then do another set of films to see if there is progression or additional white lesions, which there were. Um, I, I believe um, on those films, there were on my spine, on my right, um, on my optic nerve, um, on my right frontal lobe, um, I don't remember where they're all, but in total there were seven. Um, anyways, that's how the whole, all of that came about. So, we'll just go through all, I mean, that all happened. So, in knowing all of this, um, I decided that I needed to, to change things a little bit as far as employment being closer to my kids, I decided that I needed to 
Um, I was going to work at the, the kids' school. I was going to be a paraeducator, um, which meant that I was also not going to be making as much money, um, which was fine. Um, I was going to be taking my kids to school every day, working in their school. I just felt like I needed to be closer to them. I ended up um, working for four and a half years in the um, Severe Significant Needs program which I absolutely fell in love with. Um, if you don't know what that is, you work with children with autism, you work with children with Down syndrome, um, any disability. Um, it's uh, children that are um, severe, significant needs. And I loved working with children with those, those needs. Um, I knew I had the patience for that. That was always something that I was passionate about anyways. And um, it was very strenuous on my body, um, which um, I loved them so much that I didn't, I didn't care. So I worked in that program for several years and then um, I decided that it was too strenuous on my body. And so I decided to go to the um, um, the downgraded program, which was for children that were, um, significant needs program, which was, um, still autism, Down syndrome, children that were blind or deaf. Um, I worked with a child, um, a lot, um, that was blind and deaf, um, that has a, that had a seizure disorder. I also made sure and implemented programs where all of the children were allowed to go and be in um, regular classrooms with um, typical children. And I was there in that program for four and a half years as well until um, my immune system could no longer handle being around them all the time. Um, my my last year there, I think I uh, missed 30 days of school because um, those children were sent to us regardless if they were sick or not, um, unfortunately. And so um, I ended up um, going from there uh, to my last job which was working with amazing women um, at a hearing aid um, place in Colorado. I will not um, say the name. Um, I was there for three years. I loved every minute of it. I worked my butt off. Um, I was fired, my first ever, my job ever being fired. Um, I was fired while I was in at the hospital getting my Tysabri infusion and my reason for being fired was I was doing too many jobs was the reason for being fired and found out that for two weeks somebody was already being um, trained to do my job that they were I was fired on a Friday and they were already going to be put in my position that following Monday um, that was years ago and I am still devastated because I, I know how much I worked for that job and how good I was at that job. So, um, and I'm, I mean, I made good money. I made over $40,000 a year. Um, after that job, I did take care of a little girl for, um, one of the audiologists I worked for. I did that for three years. Um, but I made $40,000, um, a year at that job, um, and that was a large pay cut. Um, again, my kids still did everything that they, um, would have normally done. Um, they still played competitive baseball, and if anybody knows on here, competitive baseball is very expensive. Um, any football, if they wanted to play football, I didn't want anything to change for them. I wanted them to have all of the experiences that they would have normally had. The same thing, just me being sick, it didn't mean that their their world needed a change. Yes, they seen me go to the hospital. Yes, they knew that sometimes I had to stay at the hospital 
sometimes I needed to go in an ambulance to the hospital. Um, nothing that happened to me was ever a secret. Um, sometimes they went with me to appointments where, um, where my infusion appointments, they went with me to those sometimes. Um, when I worked at the school, they knew all of the kids that I worked with. They were there in the morning when they arrived. They were there when they left. They knew about all of them. They interacted with all of them. All of the experiences they were there for. And I think that that made them better men today because of all of those things. Um, but when we lost that income, um, it was a lot. I applied three different times for um, disability. I was denied every time. Um, and then it, if any of you have applied for disability, it's a long drawn out process. The paperwork that they send you is front and back about 15 pages. And if any of you have a problem with um, your hands or um, shaking of your hands, it's very difficult to do. It says on there that somebody else can do it for you, but why would you want somebody else to write down all the things that you um, want them to know about the, the things, the daily in and out in of itself things that you go through on a daily basis. So um, I did that three different times um, and every time I was denied. Uh, so it's just, um, overall, it's just a lot that people like you and I, MS, chronic illness, anything that we have to endure, but it does not have to um, take over your entire life. Um, is part of the reason why I'm doing this video again. Um, we lived in um, Colorado all of my life. I'm 40. We just recently moved here to Arizona. It'll be a year in uh, December 21st. Um, it was a big lifestyle change for us. Our entire families live back in Colorado. My husband got a huge job promotion, which is amazing. Um, it's something that um, we had to pray about and discuss. Um, I'm, um, I'm leaving a lot out because, um, the length of this video, but, um, what was I going to say? Uh, I wanted to get to the part of, um, money, um, and how stressful it can be trying to deal with it on your own for my entire um, the, the entire time that we've been married I've tried to deal with it on my own as far as um, finances and bills uh, one thing I want to say is I'm 40 um, I was never taught how to budget I my husband was never taught how to budget my parents were never taught how to budget the only thing that any of us learned when we were in high school was how to um, balance a checkbook. That's, that's it. That's all we were taught. And so all of my life I've tried to just figure it, on my, on my, figure it out on my own. Um, and the less that my husband knew, the better, I thought. My husband has high anxiety um, and I knew that. And so the less that he knew, um, the better that our world would be, I thought. And so it was just a burden on me and that I carried. And what I didn't realize is that it was all stress that was just here. And stress for um, people with MS is just, it's horrible. And so now that I have spoken to my husband and let him know and wrote it all out and printed out the documents and let him know and let him be a part of our finances and what's going on um, since being here in Arizona it's it's just changed everything and so I would stress to you do the same thing um, it may not be fun um, but be open to doing that um, it's just taken a weight off of my shoulders. It's not something that you should have to do on your own. I wish that we had, would have learned a few, a few things in high school, but that's the part that I'm getting to now. Um, this is something that I've wanted to do for a really long time. I've watched a lot of budgeting vid videos on YouTube and starting next week, we are gonna do that together, you and me. I, um, I want you to 
if you want to do this with me, I want you to leave a comment down below um, saying I'm in with a heart. Okay, so starting next week on Monday, we are going to start our budget journey together. I need you to figure out, um, get your bank statements out, figure out what you and your husband's or just you, your income every two weeks or every week. Figure out what you need for groceries every week, what you need for gas every week, for fun, for um, your but what you could budget for yourself as far as eating out. Same thing for your husband. That's your cash expenses every week. Figure out what you have for sinking funds, what your bills are that are things that aren't going away, it's like your mortgage, your utilities, your any type of um, debts you may be paying or anything. Those are your short-term sinking funds or allocated funds. And then think of long-term. That's something that I haven't thought about in a long time. Things that you would like to do, a vacation, um, something that we didn't think about until we moved to Arizona, our son who lives in Colorado, every time he flies here, it's $250. Every time that he flies back, it's $250. Every time that I want to go see my parents, it's something that we have to think about now. So those are long-term sinking funds. I would like to start um, getting groceries, a large grocery haul every six months um, because groceries are getting so expensive. These are all things that I've not thought about before. Um, my Poshmark closet, um, reselling is a big part of my life. That's how I like to try to help support our family. Um, my Poshmark closet is at Mother Spears 30. Resellers, um, if you don't do the work every day, then you're not going to make any money. But when regular people go to work every single day, they're going to get a paycheck every week or every two weeks. That's not how it is for resellers. So I want to do I sell pre-owned clothing, but I would like to set money aside so that I can start selling new with tags clothing on a, week, a daily basis. So those are all things that I would like you to look at. But then I would also, I'm so excited guys. I want to do challenges with you guys. Um, and I'm going to start selling things in my Etsy shop to help um, with this. But I just want to show it to you guys. Um, how everything's gonna um, work on Monday. Break it down a little bit for you guys, a little bit slower, and how every everything works. And so we can start fresh on Monday, have a plan, and then just see how it works every single week. And then at the end of the year, come back and do a, a yearly check with everyone and see how it's changed your life, your family's life, and most importantly, your health. Um, that's just a huge weight for everyone. And I think if that wasn't something that was weighing on us every single day, then I think our health, um, MS, any other chronic illness, anxiety that everyone faces every day, I think that that would um, be a lot take, taken off of our shoulders. So again, I'm so excited about this. Um, I was never taught how to do it. And I would love to do this journey with you. And so, again, I'm so absolutely excited. And I hope you are too. Um, I hope you like and subscribe um, to this channel. Um, it won't be so chatty like it was today. But I just thought that I needed to give you a little bit of backstory in order for you to understand where I'm at today. Um, finances um, in your family's finances aren't meant to be put on just one per person's shoulders because you're not the only one spending it, right? And so the screaming and yelling doesn't need to be happening if your husband or your wife knows where the money's going. And so um, sit down with your husband, ask him or your wife what he would like to, to also um, set money aside for. It's fun, it's absolutely fun. And it gets you talking about goals, long-term goals, short-term goals, things that you um, didn't think that would be possible. And it is. And we will make it happen. And so just like and subscribe. Put I'm in with a heart. And I can't wait. I just can't. Um, I will see you guys here on Thursday for my dollar um, thrift haul day. And again, if you need toys or anything for your children or grandchildren, 
go to my Poshmark closet. I just sent out a big text message to all of my followers on there that today and tomorrow I'm doing a bundle four of anything in my closet and I will um, give you 50% off of your total and I will get it out quickly so that you'll have it for Christmas. All right, guys, I hope you have a great day and I absolutely can't wait to um, go on this journey with you. And uh, yes, do the things that I told you to do to get ready for Monday. Have your numbers written down. Um, yeah, and I will see you then. You guys have a great day. Bye.